Here's the difference. You take comparing us, say, to the journalistic situation in New York. We had to be critics and reviewers for sure. We also had to be the news reporters of that field. And we had to be the bulletin board information providers. At that point, every Thursday in Tempo, every single area had a, an arts column. Uh, there was theater news, uh, nightclub news, uh, visual arts news, classical music news. So once a week, we, and it was just really about five or six items. Twyla Tharp just announced she's coming next February. Here are the details, here's where she's at. If you want tickets, they go on sale here, call um, every week. So you had to do that. Then if there was an artistic director who resigned or uh, a major production was planned with an interesting cast or you know, just the auditorium's annual dance, you know, that we had to report all that. So to report all that, you had to stay in constant contact with all these arts communities. You had to go to their press conferences. You had to interview them on the phone. Now, no critic for the New York Times does that. You know, they go and they see their work and they review it. They Several of them have told me over the years when it's come up, they barely know the artists that they write about. In the best of all possible worlds, that is ideal. You know, there then the critic can be this kind of detached, removed, you know, philosopher king, uh, you know, unsullied by any knowledge of these people. But we just didn't have the manpower to do that. So our choice was either to do it that way or not at all. So it did you know, breed a kind of familiarity to these people and, you know, year after year that you do the, you know, yet another interview with, a, uh, you know, the same people, you do get to know them and you get to be friendly. You kind of try to keep a professional distance because you have to be able to be harsh and critical when needs be. But you are more a part of the community than, you know, maybe some critics.